Hi, Jason Tanner here with MSU Northern at the Welding Lab. We're going to go over one of the Welding Lab projects that we're going to be doing in class. Basically, we have a setup here. I have a shaft between two centers, and we'll have these, not this exact jig, but we'll have several just like they're going to be shorter so they're allowed to fit in our booth. So, a shaft between two centers. This is a 1018 mild steel shaft, so it does not require preheat. So we can go ahead and build this up without preheat. Now some of your other steels, such as like uh, 1045, C1144, 4140, they all require a preheat temp before you build them up. Otherwise it'll crystallize and then you'll have a brittle area in your shaft. Uh, what I've done here is I've put this in the lathe and turned this area down right here to simulate a wore out bearing. A lot of your shafts, will, when the bearing goes bad, it'll wear a spot on your shaft so the bearing will not ride there anymore. It's loose. So it makes the shaft no good. So a lot of times shafts will have splines on them or a bunch of machining on them where it's more beneficial to build it up and repair the shaft than to start all over and build brand new. You have to kind of make that decision. If this was the shaft I was actually doing, I wouldn't build it up. I would go ahead and just build a new shaft because it would be cheaper in the long run for the customer. So that's our setup. We're running 035 solid wire. Um, with a 100% CO2 gas and when we look at our manufacturer setting, where do we set our welder to start welding? Now, the way we're welding this, we're going to be doing a short circuit transfer. Okay, so we can weld in any position with the solid wire. And that's why I'm using the short circuit transfer. And not only that, it put, puts less heat into the shaft when I'm welding it. So we're running 035 wire, we're running 100% CO2 gas. So if I follow this chart and I look at the different thicknesses in material, I can come down here. Anytime you start to get over a quarter inch of material, you're not, you're not a short circuit transfer anymore. You're going to more of a globular and then spray. So we want to make sure and stay in that short circuit, short circuit transfer. And if you look right here on 16 gauge, it says, well, 130 and 19, and this one says 18 and 20. My welder over there says 220 and 160 and 19. So I'm following the recommendations on my welder over there. This is just one I'm using for a demonstration and explanation. So mine here at, four, at 16 gauge says 160 and 19 volts. So that's what I have my welder set at. Okay, so now we are getting ready to set up our welder for welding our wore out bearing surface area, the simulation of it. So it's really important to be comfortable, okay? So if you're sitting down and you're not comfortable, you're gonna have a tough time doing this weld because everything has to remain fluid. You have to rotate the shaft in a counterclockwise direction as you're welding. Your welding gun will be sit here at a little slight angle, probably five degrees towards your wore out area. Now, another thing before I go any further, I, wanna, I wanted to make sure I explain this. I never explained it before. Bearing surfaces, when they wear out, are usually not even. You'll have one side of the shaft wore out more than the other. It'll, it'll be almost like a crankshaft, how it's got a little divot in it. So, if you were just to stop and build up that area without cleaning the surface so it's true all the way around, the same amount of material off of this side as that side, if you do not do that when you weld it, it will bend your shaft because you're putting more heat on one side of the shaft than the other. So it's really important to go ahead and put it in the lathe, turn it down, make it smooth before you build it up. And that'll get rid of any impurities in the metal from the bearing that might have, might have galled and fused in there. It'll get rid of all the contaminants and make it a clean surface to weld. So once we get all this prepared, we're gonna set our welder at a five degree, roughly a five degree angle towards our shoulder. And as we, as we pull our trigger, it's gonna be like a downhill weld, except we're not moving our gun. We're gonna sit here and rotate the shaft as we go, okay? And it's okay to stop for a second, just keep going and just keep, just keep turning it as you're going. A lot of people think, well, I have to keep it at a steady motion. It's okay to stop for a little bit and just keep going. You're just gonna have a little bit more buildup in that area, but it's okay. A lot of buildup machines are automated, so you do not have to turn the shaft. They're expensive, but they work really nice. 
and you can set it with a motor and a dial and it'll turn the exact speed you want it to go as you're building it up. But we are doing it as cheap as we can. A lot of people, when they first start out, they can't afford those ex that expensive stuff and this works just as good. All right. Want to make sure we have our PPE. I have a welding coat on, steel-toed boots, I have safety leather gauntlet gloves. I got uh, my welding helmet. You always want to make sure and use this, the proper shade for what you're welding. There's different shades for different amperages. And I also have a chair to sit down when I'm doing this, so I'm very comfortable and, I, and I'm not getting out of position anyway and, and getting uncomfortable where I'm going to have to reposition where it's going to take longer to get back to the weld. So here it goes. So, as you get your gun set up here, you want to set your gun on the rest, and then you want to be a five degree angle, and it's going to be a downhill weld. So, as we're turning the shaft, it creates that downhill weld. Now, as we go along, we're going to come and come into our weld, and we're just going to move over a little bit and keep going. And as you're going, you can slide your gun over and keep going. And then it's okay to stop, reposition your gun, and then start and go again. But starts and stops, you'll ha you have more chance of, uh, of uh, discontinuity there. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's my first beat around. Now, I don't like to start and stop in the same spot, so I'll start here, and then I'll go all the way around, and then once I, once I start, I'm gonna finish out this weld. I got my first beat there, so now I can get at a good 10 degree angle towards my weld, and make sure it builds up to the apex of my other weld. Okay, now you can see that we have adequate buildup on our shaft. So as we machine that off back to the original diameter, the shaft should be back to normal. <laughs> 